This is Maryland Gunworks' new Sight Pro Armorer's Grade and Gunsmith Sight Adjustment Tool. This tool is actually a universal type tool that will work on a variety of different pistols. We have in the past only provided tools specific to a certain model gun because we feel that trying to make a jack of all trades tool never really makes the tool work effectively on any particular gun. But we do understand that with the, all the new model guns coming out, that there is a lot of different you know, applications and it's not going to be cost effective to buy a tool for every single gun. So we've engineered this tool with the same attributes as our individual tools, but it's universal and, you know, it can adapt to a lot of different type pistols. So let's break this thing down and see how it works. Now the tool basically has two major main components. We have the upper carriage, which has the pusher assembly, and then we have the slide support assembly, which is the lower part. Let's take it apart and we'll talk about the slide support assembly first. Take these two knobs off the top. Just like that. And the tool will split in two. We'll put this to the side for now. Now this tool is fairly bulky, but it is designed to be worked, you know, in your hands. But we also have made optional cuts on the sides, as you can see so that you can put it in a bench vise. That way you free up your hands and you can uh, do the installation a little more carefully. But we can do it with our hands here and we're gonna show you how we do it. The only thing that is gonna be interchangeable on these tools is this one component and that is the clamp shoe. I'll take this out here for you real quick and I'll show you how it works. It's held in with this one thumb nut on the bottom. This clamp shoe here we didn't plate this, they will come black oxided. They will also be engraved in the top with all the model numbers. As a matter of fact, let me grab a Glock shoe here and show you. If you want to zoom into that, you'll see that we have engraved all of the shoes so that if you have a wide variety of them, you can quickly identify them when you have to go from pistol to pistol. It's much longer than the slide shoes on any other sight tool. Provides a lot of support on the slide. It's made out of low carbon steel. So even though it's strong, it actually is softer by design than the slide, so it won't cause any damage to the slides in case you, you know, have a very, very tight uh, sight inside your slide. It's got one center screw hole to be clamped to the tool. Let's take our slide here. This is the third generation Smith & Wesson 9mm. This is the clamp shoe for it, and it slides right into the rails like that. It can go all the way to the front for doing the front sight. Now what we suggest you do is put the shoe in the tool first and you want to flip it over, take your clamp shoe, screw it in, and you want to screw it in until it stops and then back it off maybe about a turn. And you put a little pressure on it and we're going to flip this over here. Now this side, if you'll notice, this side does not have any type of relief cut. This is the side of the tool that you'll use for probably 90% of all installation and adjustments. It has enough clearance on the main carriage to do front and rear sights, but this is the side that you want to do all of the rear sights. The mirror image of this bracket has a very deep relief cut. This is for slides that have a very large recoil spring under lug dust cover that they call it to allow you to reach the front sight and a Colt 1911 is a prime example of that. I'll show you this. If you can see how long the recoil spring lug is underneath there with the other side, you would never be able to reach a dovetail up here with that, so you would use that part of it. We'll show you that a little bit later. So we'll go back to the bracket and you have this a little loose. You take your slide, you come in from the back, you move your little support pieces out of the way and you slide it up and you don't want to tighten it just yet you just want to get it snug that way it's not going to move on you and you don't want to bring the slide support pieces up yet so you just have it like that and that way you have it secure so you can grab the main part and let's talk about it for a second before we put it onto the slide this carriage has a block that has plenty of clearance so it should remove adjustable sights, Novak style sights, and just about any sight on any particular gun. It's got a, uh, almost a half inch deep by over three quarters of an inch wide slot there. 
Now this little Delrin pad here is a uh, very nice feature. This is set from the factory to exactly in its lowest setting to be 15 thousandths of an inch above the pusher area. That way there's no guesswork. A lot of the other universal tools on the market, you have to sit there and jack up little screws and adjust it and try to eyeball where the pusher is. And that can be very cumbersome. It takes time. It also is risky because if you don't get it right and you start to move this pusher block or the jack screws as they use, you could scrape right over the top of the slide and that would ruin the finish on the slide and cause you have a very upset customer. Now we'll also show this pad is adjustable. If you flip it over, there's a set screw here, a knob, that when you turn that, you can actually telescope that pad out. And there's a reason for that, and we'll get to that when we go back onto the slide, and I'll show you why. But for 99% of all installations, you want to back that off and push that till it seats, and that'll give you your setting so that the block is a little bit below the surface of the pad. So getting back to where our slide is, we're just going to take our slide support bracket, we're going to take the upper carriage and we're just going to slide it right on top of here. And then we're going to take our two knobs and we'll get these things started here. We're not going to clamp it yet. We're just going to get it started so that the two pieces are assembled as one again. Now we want to go ahead and look and line up right at the center of the slide or the site rather with the tool so we're going to break the clamp that holds the slide down and just move it just to where we want to get it and that's probably about the center so we'll go ahead and clamp that now at this point we're going to want to take the little slide clamps and we just and you don't need a lot of pressure you're just going to bring them in until they stop there's four of them. And flip it over. And bring these two in. And that puts uh, a nice support on each side of the slide. Not only does it keep the slide from cocking side to side, but it also protects the rails. There are some model guns like the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield and the Glocks that have very thin walls between the outside of the slide and the rails. And without these support brackets, if you have a very tight sight, and you go cranking on a sight tool, you can crack the rails, and this keeps you from doing that. So once you get those done, we're gonna pull down, and as you can see, the tool just comes right down and touches the top of the slide with the little Delrin piece there, okay? Once that's done, you just lock down the clamps there, and Check everything out and you're ready to start pushing the site out. And you just turn the tool. And as you can see, it takes the site right out. Once you get the tool the site out, And there you go. Now, after you get it out, you have an option. A lot of people will prefer to go ahead and take the knobs loose and remove the whole carriage so they can flip it around to do the front sight. But you really don't have to on ones that don't have a really thick recoil lug. You can actually just lift up the rail, loosen the slide, loosen the little slide supports, like that, and then you can just slide the slide right out of the tool. Let's get the little pieces out of there. There you go. Now to do the front of the site, you just turn the tool around, and you take the slide, and you slide it in this way and let it go all the way back. And again, you just do the same thing. You just clamp the screw, you bring your carriage push your block back to the center, as you can see we're doing. Just like that. And we lower it down on there. Now, 
this again is this is where I was talking about about one of the features of the tool this adjustable Delrin block and let me loosen this thing and I'll show you what we're talking about if you want to zoom in here this Smith & Wesson slide is a unique slide it, probably less than 2% of all slides are like this but if you look carefully you'll see that the top of the slide is actually lower than this raised platform for the front sight. So that Delrin pad, if it were to touch that, that is more than 15 thousandths of an inch that that sight platform is raised up. So if we rest the slide and it contacts that Delrin pad at its lowest setting, then you'll scrape the top of the front of this slide because of this raised platform. So what you do is when you push it down, Let's get the sight back inside there. You just slide it back, clamp it down. When you get it down there, you can just take this knob and you can turn this little screw and raise up very slight amounts. It's a very nice adjustment so that you can see the clearance that you need. And once you have that where you want it, then you bring down the clamped things again. And that sandwiches everything together. Now, as you can see, this front sight with this thickness of recoil uh, plug right here, the recoil guide thing here, with that thickness there, that sight is capturing it, but maybe not 100% or ideal. So for this particular uh, slide, I would probably go ahead and flip the whole bracket around and use the clearance side. But for now, we'll show that it can push it just like that. Just make sure that you bring your little slide clamps. And again, do not tighten these things tight because it's on a screw, so they're not going to slip. You just want to tighten them snug, just like that, not overly tight. And then you've got it, the carriage with enough clearance, so you just bring it over. And you just look carefully and just make sure that you have the clearance that you need. And this is a little... It's a little high. I brought it up a little bit too much. So all you do is you just break that loose a little bit. You turn that a little bit and then you clamp these back down and it lowers it down just a little bit more. And that's about perfect. So as you can see, it's just turning that sight off with no problem. There we go. And then again, to get it out, just bring these up and the option is you can take them up remove it completely just so that you're not fumbling with it so it's not as cumbersome but you can just lift it up loosen all four of the little knobs real quick and slides right out simple as that so as you can see the tool is designed to do a variety of different pistols but it's really engineered to be specific to each one as you're using it this slide shoe is the key it does several things. Number one, it protects the slide because it gives it support on the inside. It also assures that the slide is perfectly straight because you have over two inches of support all the way down this bracket. So the slide cannot be cocked left to right, which means the sight's going to be pushed in perfectly perpendicular to the rails. The other thing about it is, is that it doesn't let the slide lift up and hit the pusher block if you really are cranking on it. If you only relied on the slot side supports here, it is possible that it could lift up and it could also put too much stress on this Delrin pad because that would be the only thing keeping the slide held down and you don't want that. So the combination of the shoes, like I said, the shoes will be very inexpensive. You'll be able to buy them as you see a, a need for them. Um, and uh, a lot of the shoes can work on, like for the Glock example, it works on every Glock except for the really, really small pistols. And the, you know, the M&P works on all the model M&Ps and the SIGs, you know, shoes work on all the universal SIG tools as well, or SIG pistols as well. Okay, here's a quick little tip on uh, when you come across a slide that has external safeties like this. As you can see, when you're trying to do the front sight, we'll loosen the shoe a little bit. You'll see with the slide support pads, there's no way to get it in there without these interfering, obviously. So we'll show you a quick tip on how to do that. Basically what you want to do is just take the shoe out and go ahead and put it in the slide to start with, like this. And then just drop the thing down inside the carriage like that. And then go ahead 
and put the clamp on. And that's the nice thing about the design of this tool is that the carriage is completely removable from the slide bracket here. So when you're ready to do it, you just slide it in like that. Pull it out a little bit farther right there. You lock it down. You bring your slide supports in. Again, you don't have to put a, exert a lot of force on these. You just bring them down until they touch. Then you just bring your carriage on top and you're good to go. As you can see, everything works. And then when you're done, take that off and you take the shoe completely out. Loosen your little slide supports and take the whole thing out with the shoe. Easy as that. Okay, when you use the Site Pro tool, we do recommend that you do routine oiling of all of the threaded components just to keep them from galling. Here we have just a standard utility oil and you just want to put just a few drops, not many at all, and then work it through into the threads. And then you also want to lubricate on this side. Just take the knobs up like that. Just put like one drop. And you don't have to do this every time you use the tool, but at least, you know, every couple times you use the tool. And then just close it up. And the same thing here, just on these screws here, just one drop. That's all it needs. Just one small drop of oil. Bring those in and out a little bit and that'll keep the tool working for a lifetime. Most of the sites that you will encounter have straight sides, flat sides, so the tool block that we have, a standard that comes with the tool, should work fine. However, some model guns, namely the Glock and the H&K USP P2000, they have angled sights, so the sides of the sights have a 30 degree bevel on them. Now, technically you could use this block, but you do risk possibly putting a small indentation in the side of the sights. So we do offer an optional complete assembly here that has a block bushing shaft uh, side support with the angled sides, as you can see. And we're gonna show how easily it is to exchange those. This is also the same process if you do damage these threads, if for some reason, uh, you have an extremely tight sight and you use some type of artificial force and that's one of the things we do want to um, you know definitely state is that we will not warranty this tool if you use any type of artificial cheater bars on the end of that we specifically engineered this tool so that the tightest sight you should be able to turn with just hand pressure now we do allow you to loosen the set screw and you can push the t-handle off to one side to give a little more force but absolutely under no circumstances try to use artificial pipes and stuff on the sides and try to do it. Number one, you'll risk damaging your slide because if a site is that tight, there is no reason you need to be trying to force it in, into the slide. You need to go ahead and pull it out and uh, with gunsmithing techniques, file it, sand it, and make sure that it's a proper fit. Also, if you're trying to remove some factory sites that are installed with an arbor press and this tool does not break them loose, do not try to use any type of exterior force like a cheater bar. Go ahead and uh, break it loose with like a brass punch and a hammer. Okay, so let's get to changing this out. As you'll see on this one end, there are two screws that hold the main bushing assembly in place. On the opposite side is a smooth bore bushing. You do not have to take that bushing out. We'll show how the whole thing comes out. And to make it quick, we're going to use a little quarter inch drive socket on an impact wrench. First thing you want to do is turn the T-handle all the way in so that you have clearance. Bring it in as far as it'll go, or at least until you run out of threads and maybe just back it off a couple turns so that you have just the threads hidden. And we'll move the T-handle out of the way and we'll remove the first screw and then we'll rotate the T-handle and we'll Move the second screw. Once these two screws are taken out, the entire assembly will slide right out. Then we'll take the Glock and HK block with the slants on it and just do the same process. 
you carefully feed it in, guide it in, and take your time. Don't cause any burrs in the aluminum body. And it should seat right in. And then from this side, obviously move that thing out of the way a little bit. You can see you need to line up the clearance holes for the cap screw heads. And once you get those lined up, you just want to start one of the screws. And utilizing the impact driver is very convenient, but please make sure that you actually use a conventional quarter inch Allen wrench and start each thread at least two or three turns. Last thing you want to do is ruin a very expensive tool by having the screw in there crooked, throwing the impact driver on there and cross threading all the threads. So take your time and make sure that you get each screw in a couple turns and then once you get them in where you know they're straight, then you can quickly seat the two screws. As you can see, the, make sure that the tool spins freely, doesn't have any binding. And that's it, it's as quick as that. So that's the same procedure if you want to switch from the straight sided to the angle sided, and also if you damage the block somehow and you need to get a new uh, replacement, you can take the whole assembly out um, and put a whole new assembly in there to replace that. Okay, we're going to show real quick how to install the front and rear sights on this slide. Let's do the front sight first, and again with the recoil spring lug here, we're going to use the relief side. And we just loosen that, and remember you're going to adjust it when you get the top main piece on, so you just get it snug, just so it's uh, not going to fall around on you. Do not tighten up the slide supports just yet. And we'll go ahead and bring the carriage down. And get that on there and this again is one of the slides that we need to actually adjust the Delrin pad a little bit because this has a raised post front sight so we're going to go ahead and turn this till we just get some clearance right there and it's very easy to see when you have clearance and then we'll go ahead and these close. Now, before we lock it down, makes it really easy. You just loosen that, you just move the slide and lock it down, and you've got that so you can access it easily. And we'll take our front sight. Now, most front sights have a lead in. As you can see, this has a lead in on the left trailing edge. So we'll slide it in this direction. And you want to try to get the sight in there as far as you can, either by pushing with your thumb or even tapping it a little bit with the end of like a plastic screwdriver. But you just want to make sure that you get it started straight. That looks pretty good. Then we're going to back our carriage up a little bit, loosen up the slide, slide it down, get it right in the center of the block like that and lock it down. And at this point is when you want to go ahead and bring your slide supports in, just follow the quick steps, and then bring down the two bolts. As you can see, there's really nowhere that this slide or sight or anything can go. It's locked down in so many different directions, makes it really safe. And then we're just going to slowly turn it, constantly looking inside and making sure that the sight is going in straight. And you just keep turning it. And this is why having the cuts here and to put it on a vise where you can actually mount it like that, have both your hands free, turn with one hand, and you can sit there and watch it works well. But we wanted to just show today that this thing can be used as a hand tool as well. And you get it centered. And that's it, you're done. Okay? So once you get that done, you just reverse the process. You break these loose first. Pull the top piece off. Now again, you don't have to take this completely off if your slide does not have the external safeties because it can just slide right through. You can just lift it up a little bit, but it's, as you can see, it's not hard to do at all. So now this, even we're gonna be using this side for the rear, so you really don't need to remove the slide out of the shoe clamp. You just need to slide it down because we're gonna flip it 180 degrees. So we're gonna turn it around this way and we're gonna bring this 
down like this. Now the rear sight assembly is not raised, so we're going to back the screw up here so that the Delrin pad can push all the way down so we have our standard set 15 thousandths clearance there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put the knobs back on. And we won't go all the way down yet. Let's kind of pull it up out of the way. We'll move this way up here and then lock it down. Then again, we're going to look for our lead-ins. And on this particular site, the lead-in is on that side. So we're going to install it that direction. As you can see, the rear sight actually went in quite a bit farther than the front sight did. That's really nice. And then you just look in the end, move your slide across there. You loosen this up. Bring it back and we'll get this right where we want to, right about there. Okay, and move this over a little bit, get it right in the center, lock it down, and then like I said, there's no there's no fiddling with the height. You just push it all the way down, let it sit on the top of the slide, you lock it down, and again, as you can see, everything's set for you. There's no trying to figure out how high the slide is. You don't have to worry about it cocking up in the air because you have so many different locking mechanisms. The shoe is in the rail. That keeps the slide down. You have these side pads that you'll lock down here. That keeps the rails protected. It keeps the slide protected against cracking if you have a really tight sight. And you have your set pad, so you just start turning. As you can see, just you have a lot of engineered force built into this tool. So it's very easy to remove even a really large rear sight like this. Let's go a couple more turns. That looks about centered. Push it forward a couple turns just to break it in the center and you are done. That's all you have to do. Break this loose and I'll show you on this one how we don't have to take the top carriage completely off. We've just gone up about maybe half of an inch clearance, and then you reverse the process. Real quick, just pop the little side support knobs out, break the shoe, just a couple turns, and then the tool or the slide comes right out and you are done.